What's up, everybody? Welcome to another live training. I hope you guys all are having an amazing day. My name is Juan Geronimo. For those of you guys that don't know me, and for everyone that is brand new to my live training, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. You guys are definitely in for a treat. Now, in the meantime, guys, while I let this live start to do its thing, while I let Facebook and YouTube start to, you know, push the live and, you know, help out with the algorithm, in the meantime, can any of you guys watching right now go ahead and comment down below what city and state you guys are currently watching from? I am currently in Texas. For those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Juan Geronimo. I currently own an ATM business and I have 20 ATMs spread out throughout Texas, currently generating me passive income. And now I'm here helping you guys do the exact same thing. So in the meantime, while we give it a couple seconds, Go ahead and comment down below, and I'll go ahead and read some of these comments, shout some of you guys out, and let's get the life started. Let me go ahead and pull up the comments over here on this side real quick. Michigan, Alexander from Michigan. Shout out to you, brother. Shout out to you. All right, guys, let me go ahead and, you know, give it a couple more seconds real quick so more people can go ahead and tune in. In the meantime, everyone watching, even if you guys are watching the replay, go ahead and comment down below what city and state you guys are watching from. I'll be reading all the comments even after the replay gets posted, guys, so don't worry. I still interact with everyone watching the replay. Now, in the meantime, guys, go ahead and comment what state you guys are watching from. And also, guys, real quick. Go ahead and have your pen and paper ready. And the reason why I say this is because I am going to give you guys a full-on live training today. Literally, I'm going to give you guys step-by-step -step on how to start your ATM business. Not only that, I am going to teach you guys and give you guys all of the fundamentals from step to step and how to actually successfully run your ATM business. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and give it 30 seconds real quick, and then we're going to go ahead and jump on to the live training. All right, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to another live training. My name is Juan Geronimo, and welcome back to Passive Income with ATM's Facebook group. I hope you guys are all having an amazing day. Let's go ahead and get started into, with tonight's uh, live training, guys. I don't want to take up too much of your guys' time. I know a lot of you guys have your jobs, have your current businesses, or even have to spend time with the family. So the last thing I want to do is hold you off for a full-on hour and, you know, have you just kind of sitting here in the live. So let's go ahead and jump straight into the live training real quick, guys. For those of you guys that are just now joining, go ahead and um, comment what state you guys are watching from. Uh, shout out to Terrence from Delaware. Shout out to you, brother. For those of you guys that are just tuning in, comment the state that you guys are watching from. Also, guys, real quick, on an introduction on myself. My name is Juan Geronimo, guys. I currently own 20 ATMs. In the in Texas, all over Texas, and all of my ATMs are currently generating me passive income. Literally, as I am sitting here speaking to you guys now, I didn't just start from you know a business and entrepreneurship background. I was growing up, you know, in a Mexican household, living a nine to five, as you guys can see right here in the picture to the left. I was working in construction from literally high school all the way up to like 21, 22 years old, and ultimately. Early on in my in in my uh, in my life, I knew that this wasn't the way to go. I did not want to continue to work a nine to five. I didn't want to continue to report to someone or have to call in or have to ask for a raise. You know, I I just that wasn't me. I was always a serial entrepreneur. I just never knew what to actually do. So 
I was able to, you know, save up my money whenever I was working in the construction industry. I was not only working in construction, but I was also also working in the oil fields out in West Texas. And I was actually able to save up a good amount of money. Now, I, once I started to save that money, I started to actually invest my time into different, you know, business ventures. I, I grew up working at a car wash from high school, from like, beginning of my high school toward the end and I started picking up you know how to detail cars and all that good stuff so literally from that that information all of that knowledge that I gathered from that car wash I started to implement it into my own self and I opened up my auto detailing business now I knew how to buff cars I knew how to wax I knew how to do all the nine all, all nine yards right and I started implementing that into my my life. I started my auto detailing business, and I, I slowly started to progress, right? I started to build clientele after clientele, and sooner or later, it became harder and harder because I had to now find, find people to hire. Now, when it comes to a business like auto detailing, you know, once you, get, once you start to get busy, you're going to have to start hiring people. And then when it comes to hiring people, you have to hire responsible people that are willing to leave the job and do the job just like you would. And that was actually pretty hard to do. That was one of the toughest parts when it came to my auto detailing business was figuring out who was actually going to help me and provide the quality work that I that I did with all of the vehicles that I was cleaning. That was one of the toughest parts. Now, after my auto detailing business and all the ups and downs, I decided to start looking for another business venture, more passive, somewhere where I can actually put my money work for me rather than actually work for my money and trade my time. That's whenever I started finding out about the ATM business as well as the vending machine business. Believe it or not, guys, I was actually looking into the vending business more. But then once I found out about the ATMs and I started kind of putting two and two together, I was like, man, it's a no-brainer to go with the ATMs. With vending machines, not only do you have to buy a vending machine, and they could be a little pricey, especially if they are brand new, but you also have to buy merchandise. You have to hope for the merchandise to sell. You have to hope that it doesn't expire. And ultimately, you know, like I said, I put two and two together, and the ATM business ended up outweighing the vending machine business. Why? Because with the ATM business, guys, you simply just get an ATM machine, you place it on location and you let your ATM work for you. You fill it up with your liquid cash. So let's say, for example, you guys have, you know, three to five to six thousand dollars sitting in your bank account making you no money. You use that. You use that capital and you fill up your ATM. And now what's going to happen is your ATM is going to start generating you passive income. When customers go up to the ATM machine and they try to withdraw 20 bucks, your ATM is going to charge them a total of two, 250 to 350 per transaction. And guess what? That is profit to you. Now, let's say your ATM doesn't perform well. Well, guess what? ATM business, it's a floating asset. You can get that ATM, take it out of that location, which you have the right to do that according to your contract or location agreement, and you can relocate it to a better location and ultimately start generating passive income. So that those are just... The, the fundamentals about the business that kind of got me leaning more toward this business. And this was three years ago, guys. This was back in 2020, back when COVID started to hit. And although COVID started to come around, I didn't give up. I believed in myself. I took the leap of faith. I kept investing in myself. I invested into mentors. I invested into courses. And at the end of the day, guys, I just kept pushing. I kept pushing and started off with my first ATM. I actually placed my first ATM in a cell phone repair. It's a cell phone repair store, and they also sold like things like, like speakers and all that good stuff. And once I placed that ATM there, it started off pretty slow, but that's just kind of how the ATM business works, guys. You, Your ATM, it always starts off slow. You have to let it nurture. You have to let it sit at the location. You have to let their customers start to see that there's an ATM in there. So over time, it started to pick up little and uh, little by little. And then this ATM actually started generating me $250 a month consistently. At the time, I was like, dang, $250? I literally had to put no more than one hour a week to get $250 a month. So right then and there, I started to put this business into perspective. And I was like, what if I can have two, three, four, five ATMs now generating me $250 a month? At the end of the day, guys, the more ATMs, the more, the more passive income you're going to generate. 
So long story short, guys, this was back in January of 2020 when I locked down my first ATM. Actually, I installed it in February. I started my company in, in January. But February, I installed my first ATM, generating me $250. Three years later, guys, to, 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 uh, till today, I currently have 20 ATMs generating me over five figures a month and passive income, guys. And now with all of my... All of my knowledge on this business, all of the the experience, my trial and error that I was able to gather throughout my journey, I am now putting all into this group, into my social medias. That way you guys can learn this business and ultimately start this business all on your own. Yo, what's up, Chris Torres? How you doing, brother? But yeah, guys, that is, that is the story on how I actually got started with the ATM business, but with that being said, guys, and I'm sorry for for the text. I know right here where where it says Juan Geronimo, it looks a little sloppy. My my streamyard is actually acting up, so we'll, I'm sure the agenda will act up as well. Yeah, there we go. But let's go over the agenda. Don't pay attention too much on the little words on the on the left side. Let's go ahead and go over the agenda, guys. Today we're going to go over the road to generate passive income and ultimately the step-by-step -step on how to start your ATM business. I am literally going to give you guys an online step-by-step -step course live right here, guys. So if you guys are, are ready to go ahead and get started, like I said, get your pen and paper ready because we will start an online step-by-step -step course live. Now, how do I know, how do you guys know this is live? Well, you guys can actually comment in the comments right now interact with me ask me any questions and of course i'm going to be answering them right here so for those of you guys that are excited to learn the atm business the fundamentals on how to start the atm business go ahead and comment atm in the comments right now that's atm go ahead and comment atm guys i will be telling you guys to comment here and there and that's just because it helps out with the algorithm so i really do appreciate when you guys comment and interact with me in general it helps out with the algorithm. It helps, you know, Facebook, YouTube, and all our social media platforms to push us to the top and ultimately help more people find out about the ATM business, find out about our group. So if you guys can go ahead and comment ATM, I would greatly appreciate it. And I will go ahead and get started with the step-by-step -step on how to start your ATM business in 30 seconds. All right, guys, real quick, the road to generating passive income with ATMs. Now, before you actually start your ATM business, there's a couple things that you actually have to implement into your life in order to successfully start any business in general. And as cliche as it sounds, guys, mentality plays a big part when, when it comes to starting your ATM business. At the end of the day, guys, you want to have your mentality right at the at the end of the day, you want to separate yourself from people that won't help you succeed. You know, like that quote, your network is your net worth. That is exactly what I mean by mentality, surrounding yourself with the right people, surrounding yourself with the right, you know, re people with the right mentality, those entrepreneurs, uh, those entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, you want to surround yourself with those people, because at the end of the day, that is going to go a long way, not only for you, but for them. At the end of the day, you guys were, are going to be able to network. You're going to be able to teach each other different tips, different tricks into your guys' business and ultimately carry that a long way with you. For example, I am, I'm working with uh, a good friend of mine. His name is Bernard. He's actually working with me on the back end with this group, which I will introduce to you guys probably sometime within the next couple of days. But he's been you know, helping me out when it comes to operations, when it comes to sales, there's, there's so many things that he's been doing throughout his career that he's been able to help me out with. Same thing with me. I've been doing things when it comes to the ATM business and scaling my business that I've been able to show him and teach him. And ultimately at the end of the day, guys, your network is your net worth. So highly recommend you guys to change your mentality. If you guys, you know, 
<clears throat> are around people that are distracting you, are around people that are going out to the clubs every single weekend, try to separate yourself from them because at the end of the day, you don't want to end up being like them, guys. Change your mentality, and I promise you, you're going to be off to a great start. Now, number two, guys, you want to be disciplined. I know this sounds cliche, guys. I know you hear this everywhere, but it is 100% true. You have to be disciplined, meaning if you're at a nine to five or if you're at a current, you know, part time job or you're doing a current side hustle and you want to, you know, save your money and ultimately invest it into yourself. Don't go out and spend it on dumb things like materialistic items. Don't go buy the watch. Don't go buy the newest phone. Don't go buy clothes, the Gucci, the Louis, none of that, guys. At the end of the day, you want to go ahead and save as much money as possible so then you can then use that not only for a rainy day, but to invest in yourself, invest into a business. Whenever I was working in the oil fields, there were so many opportunities that, that I could have, uh, you know, and, and bad opportunities of going out and going to the club and, and buying um, all kinds of, you know, done materialistic items because I was making great money out there. But at the end of the day, I already had a goal in mind. And my goal in mind was to not only invest in myself, but to put my money to work for me. And that that helped me not spend my money. That helped me save as much money as possible. So you guys have to be disciplined. You guys have to uh, save as much money as possible. And then also start, you know, reading books, start reading books, help out, help, help yourself out with knowledge. Because at the end of the day, when you're in business, you're also in sales, you're going to have to be able to sell some type of whether it's service, whether it's product, you're going to have to learn how to talk to people. You're going to have to learn how to network, how to communicate, how to build relationships, how to operate. And the best way to do that is not only on YouTube because everything's on YouTube now, but reading books is going to help you come a long way, guys. So instead of being on your phone on TikTok, like I said, guys, be disciplined. Get a book. I currently use Audible. If you guys aren't using Audible, highly recommend it. Books and books on there are very cheap, $5.99, and you can listen to it on your headphones, on your phone. If you're at the gym and you're working out, you know, instead of listening to all that music, listen to a book, learn some knowledge from these books. And at the end of the day, guys, stay disciplined. And then consistency, guys, consistency is key. Whenever you start investing into yourself, whenever you start going through these courses, whenever you start going through these uh, YouTube videos and, and books, Make sure that you're following these structures. You're, you're actually implementing them into your life and stay consistent with it. Meaning if you are starting the ATM business and you're going out and prospecting locations every Monday, every Tuesday, just because you are having a hard time doesn't mean next Monday take the day off. Or just because you were able to log one or two locations the first week doesn't mean take next week off. Guys, you have to stay consistent. You have to keep going because some some days, some weeks, you may have a bad day or a bad week, and others you may have a good a good day or a bad a good week. But at the end of the day, that doesn't mean stop. Stay consistent, keep pushing, and eventually you're going to get your goal. You're going to get to your goals, guys. I wasn't able to scale my business to 20 ATMs if I didn't stay consistent, if I didn't stay disciplined. For example, let me give you guys a little quick story on actually one of the locations that I was able to lock down just because I was staying consistent. It was It's a uh, cash-only restaurant that I actually currently have an ATM in there, and it's actually one of my highest-performing ATMs, generating me about over a 1,000 transactions a month. And this ATM, this location right here, and 1,000 transactions a month, guys, that is above average. That is a phenomenal location. Uh, these locations are actually a little harder to come by, but there's still, there's still some out there, right? But this location right here, I kept going to the business, and I used to go there even as a, even as a kid, right? Because it's in my, it's in my area, it's in, it's local to me. I used to go there and. I started to realize that there were a cash-only business. At the time, I didn't know about ATMs or any of that, but I knew that it was a cash-only business. So then when I finally started the ATM business, I had that location already in mind. Now, I was staying consistent, and by consistent, I meant I kept going to that location, trying to get a hold of the manager, the owner, and a lot of the times, they were turning me away. They were like, hey, we can't connect you with the owner. It's confidential information. We can't just give you her information. Leave your business card, and we'll pass that over. And guess what, guys? That actually never worked out. I always left my business cards. I always left my brochures, and I would never get a call back. So one thing that I did 
was not only continue to go to that location every single other day or every single week, but one thing that I implemented after I stayed consistent was giving a referral fee to the manager in order to connect me to the business owner. So by this time, guys, I was already like a month or two, even possibly three months, trying to, you know, repeatedly visiting the location, trying to get a hold of the business owner, and I was getting no answer. I was going nowhere. They wouldn't, they wouldn't connect me. So one thing that I thought about was like, what if I pay the manager a referral fee, cash, and then she connects me to the business owner? Because managers, they have connections with the business owner. They, they communicate directly through them. They manage their business. So one thing that I did was I told the business uh, manager, I was like, hey, how about this? If you can connect me with the business owner, I will pay you a $200 referral fee just by getting me to start talking to her about this proposal. And if I end up locking this location under agreement, I install one of my ATMs, I will pay you out a $200 referral fee. This was already a couple of months after I've been going back and forth trying to get a hold of this location. And guess what, guys? The next day, the business owner calls me. Hey, hey, is this Juan? I'm like, yes. Uh, oh, uh, I'm calling oh, about, you know, so-and-so restaurant. I'm, I'm calling in regards to ATM installation. I'm like, oh, yeah. And then we started talking. We started building a relationship. We ended up meeting at their restaurant and ended up locking the location under contract, guys. So at the end of the day, it's all about staying consistent. I could have easily turned around and left that business alone and never came back. But guess what? If I didn't stay consistent, if I didn't stay disciplined, I wouldn't have had that location till this day, generating me over a thousand transactions a month. So at the end of the day, guys, 100% recommend staying consistent because it is key to stay consistent. And last but not least, guys, I know I probably don't have it on here, but it's patience. Being patient is key as well, guys. If I was impatient with this location, if I would have took that second no or the third no and, and would have left and continued to prospect other businesses, I would have never had this location. So it's all about staying disciplined, staying consistent, and more, most importantly, guys, having the right mentality. I always had a pos positive mindset when it came to this location, and I was able to lock it down. <clears throat> so this is how you are, you are going to be able to actually scale your business, guys, implementing these three things into your life. Now, let's go ahead and move on to our next, which is the course. Now, if you guys are excited for the course, before we actually get into the course, guys, get your pen and paper out because you're going to have to write some of these things down. I know I'm probably talking a little bit fast. I do apologize. I'll try to slow down. I'm a fast talker. I apologize. But if you guys are excited for the ATM course, go ahead and go ahead and comment success. Go ahead and comment success right now if you guys are excited for the course. And I'll go ahead and get you guys started with that course in just a second. Give me 30 seconds and I'll be back with the course. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. I see a couple of successes. <clears throat> Bernard, Bernard in the chat. That's my brother right there, guys. That's who I was talking about earlier. If any of you guys are not friends with not friends with Bernard, go ahead and send them a quick request, guys. You will need to send them a request. And, and the reason why I say this is because we got something special coming up in the next couple of days. And you guys are definitely going to need Bernard as a friend. So for those of you guys watching right now, or for those of you guys watching the replay, Bernard in the comments, Bernard Ibarra, go ahead and shoot him a friend request. He is going to be part of our team, and we will be announcing him. He's been working in the background, but we're going to bring him on onto the to the face of the to the group so you guys can communicate with him, and he can walk you guys through anything that you guys need. But <clears throat> let's go ahead and go over the – course on how to start the ATM business guys this is a live course so it is going to be pretty quick and you guys are going to have to send uh <clears throat> start writing this down because again guys I don't want to hold too much of your guys's time so let's make it quick but valuable 
Number one, guys, in order to start the ATM business, you have to be able to form a company. Now, when it comes to forming a company, guys, you have to form a legitimate company for the ATM business. You can't just go and get a, a company for, let's say, um, digital marketing or or you know convenience store or auto detailing or construction you can't just open up any company and the reason why i say this is because banks will not allow you to work with them if you don't show them that you're a legitimate atm business and the first thing that they look at is your company your llc now i know a lot of you guys have this question and i get this question often which is can i can i use my current llc now Sometimes you can get away with it depending on the bank that you work with, but sometimes you can't. One thing I wouldn't recommend you to do is tie both businesses together if one business or the other is vulnerable to lawsuits. Because at the end of the day, whenever you put two different businesses under the LLC, let's say, God forbid, you get sued under that LLC, you're tying both businesses together, and now you're risking them both. So I always recommend everyone, even my students, to apply for a brand new LLC for the ATM business. At the end of the day, you know, you're you're separating that business from any other business that you currently own, and it'll be its, in, its own entity. So you want to start off by forming your LLC. There is a couple ways on how you can start your LLC, guys. You could do it online. You could do it through your state website, or you can even hire an attorney or an accountant to help you out with that. Tax professionals could probably help you out with that as well. Now, your LLC... One thing I do recommend you guys to do is make sure that you do your due diligence when applying for the LLC so you apply the proper way. One of my favorite ways on how to actually apply for companies and LLCs is through inkfile.com. Can you guys go ahead and comment inkfile.com or actually I'll go ahead and do it for you guys. But inkfile.com is one of my favorite uh, websites to apply for your LLC because with these guys you can actually apply and pay the state fee. You don't have to pay any processing fees. You don't have to pay any convenient fees or any of that. Pro not, nothing, operating fees, none of that. You pay the state fee alone. Now, that will be the silver package that I would recommend anyone to go ahead and apply for. Because at the end of the day, guys, you don't need all the accounting services, all the taxes services. You don't need any of that, especially as a beginning entrepreneur, especially starting with one or two ATMs. I, it's more than likely that these ATMs are not going to be generating you. Th these one to two ATMs are not going to generate you over, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. So this is not really necessary for an accountant. It's not really necessary for any of the service that they provide. So 100% go with the silver package. The silver package, you're only paying for the state fee. So depending on which state you're currently located in will depend on the fee that you have to pay. Now, once you apply for your LLC, it is as simple as applying for a driver's license or an ID like you do in the DMV, guys. It's as simple as putting in your first and last name, your, you know, address, all that good stuff, business name, all that good stuff. Once you submit your application, what's going to happen is Inkfile is going to send it to the state. They're going to go ahead and look over your account, make sure everything's good. Once they give you, get you approved for your LLC, they will then send you an email with your articles of organization, all that good stuff, which is the documents that you are going to need when opening up your business bank account. Now, before you guys actually go to the bank, you will need to set up your EIN, which is an employer identification number. An employer identification number, for those of you guys that don't know, it's another word for um, or another term for social security number, but instead the EANs for your business. So it's in a sense like your social for yourself or your personal uh, use. An EIN you're going to also need when it comes to applying for your bank account. An EIN, guys, Inkfile will offer the service to get you an EIN, but you do have to pay a fee. Don't pay that fee. Uh, with Inkfile, all you do have to do is pay for the silver package. Don't get any extra fees. You should only be paying for the package for your LLC, which is the state fee. I know they're going to offer you your EIN, but you can actually get your EIN for free. I'm about to give you guys. I'm about to give you guys a bunch of golden nuggets. So if you guys don't have a pen and paper, I would suggest you do that now. Don't worry. This live will be posted anyways after it's done, so you guys will be able to go back and rewatch. But your EIN, guys, you will need to go get in the IRS website. Now the IRS website, guys, you have to make sure that you go to the correct website. The last thing you want to do is go to the wrong website and possibly get scammed or even, you know 
have to pay for it because you're on the wrong website. There is a couple companies out there that have IRS and all that good stuff in their domain, and they get you to search them up, put in all your information, and then they're like, hey, it's $30, $40, $50 fee to get your EIN. Some of those are legit. Some of those are not. I would highly suggest to go to the IRS website, and the IRS website is irs.gov, irs.gov. That is the website that you guys want to go to to get your EIN. Now, your EIN, guys, uh, employer identification number. It's as simple as your LLC, your first and last name, your business name, as well as your address, all that good stuff. Now, the great thing about the EIN is you're actually able to obtain that information right then and there, guys, within the snap of a finger. So if you're applying for your EIN on your phone or your computer, you're actually able to submit the application and be able to download the PDF with your EIN right then and there. And you can print it or you can email it to the bank or whatever. Um, funny story, actually, I was applying for one of my for one of my businesses. I was trying to open up a bank account. I had my LLC. I had everything that I needed, but I forgot my EIN. I, I forgot it. So I was already outside of the bank. I was literally uh, about to walk in because my appointment was in the next couple minutes. And I was like, shoot. I don't have my EIN. So one thing that I did was I literally went to my phone. I went to the IRS website and I started implement. I started literally putting in all of my information, applying for the EIN on my phone. And I was actually able to download my EIN right here to my phone. And all I did was email that to my banker. She was able to print that out and get me set up. So it's literally that simple to get your EIN set up. Now, like I said, guys, your EIN, you can get it for free. Do not pay for it. Um, if you end up paying for it already or or you end up, you know, paying for it through Infile, that's perfectly fine. But just trying to help you guys out by letting you guys know that you can get it for free with the IRS website. But once you got your LLC, once you got your EIN, you're ready to go, guys. You're ready to go set up your business bank account. Now, when it comes to the business bank account, here's a couple things that you need to consider. You cannot go work with a big bank such as Wells Fargo, Chase, Bank of America. The, these three big banks that I just named, you want to stay away from. It doesn't matter if you've been banking with them for a minute. It doesn't matter if you have a relationship with them. Sometimes they will take you in, but guess what? They're going to kick you out or they're going to red flag your account once they find out you're in the ATM business. You want to stay away from these banks. And I'm telling you guys this from experience. When I started this business, the course that I actually invested into, they were like, go to Bank of America. I have a connection. Email this email address and they'll get you in. Boom. I did that. I did as I was told because at the time I didn't know any better. I, I went and started working with Bank of America and I was per I was banking with them perfectly fine. They were actually like two, three minutes down the down the road right here from where I live. So for me, I was like, oh, shoot. Like, you know, the, the bank is literally down the street. It, it's not going to hurt. I'm going to be able to get, you know, run across the street, withdraw some money, go fill up my ATMs. I'm going to be able to knock out this process in, in no time. Well, I was actually banking with this bank for nine months, and I showed up on a Friday afternoon to withdraw some cash. And guess what? They were like, hey, we can't allow you to withdraw cash. Unfortunately, your account's frozen. We don't know why. Here's this number. Give them a call and find out. Well, Long story short, I give them a call. They tell me, hey, we do not work with the ATM business. We for, we found out that you're in the business, so we will have to shut your account down. The current funds in your bank account, you can't withdraw. We have to send them to your house through a cashier's check. Now, it's Friday, getting close to the weekend, which is one of my busiest, you know, busiest times when it comes to the ATM business in general. And I had no money to fill up my ATMs with, so... I literally had to put some of my ATMs out of service until next week because during the weekends, no bank is opened. I couldn't set up appointments to go try to open up an account. So I had to literally put some of my ATMs out of service as well as I had to borrow friends and family cash just to be able to fill up the ones that I could fill up. So at the end of the day, guys, I went through those trial and errors. I went through those up, the up and downs in my career and, um, I am now here to help you guys out to avoid that. So avoid these three big banks. They will end up shutting you down. It doesn't matter if you have a relationship. Like I said, guys, I have a student currently that says that he's been banking with Bank of America for, uh, he said, like 15 years. And he said that his bank manager told him that since he has a great relationship, he's able to open up a bank account. I was like, all right. 
If you want to go ahead and do that, there's nothing I can do. All I'm here to do is to mentor you, advise you. But if you want to go ahead and do that, then go ahead and do that. Just, I mean, not, I wish you number luck, right? Well, literally a couple months later, guys, same thing happened to him. They told him, hey, we can't work with you. We're, we're freezing your account. He's like, damn, Juan. He's like, I should have listened to you, bro. Guess what happened today? And I'm like, what happened? He's like, my bank account shut me down. Now I don't got a bank for the eight, for my ATMs. I'm like, I told you. I was like, I told you. The, uh, I, I hate to say it, but I told you so. And unfortunately, he had to go through that because he went with Bank of America because he thought that just because he had a, a relationship with them that he was able to bank with them. That's not how it works, guys. When those higher ups find out that you are working with the ATMs, they're going to kick you out. So that, that's just what happens. Banks that you do want to target or smaller banks, you want to target credit unions. You want to target smaller banks like Citibanks, Comerica's, PNC's. Those these smaller banks are the type of banks that you want to target when it comes to the ATM business. Highly recommend you guys to do your due diligence when it comes to the banks because every state is different. Every state doesn't have, for example, Comerica or every state doesn't have PNC's or Citibank. So every state varies. Highly recommend you guys to do your due diligence. See which bank is in your state and then go set up your account or at least give them a call. One thing I always recommend when it comes to the ATM business is give your bank a call. That way you don't waste your time. That way you don't waste the banker's time and show up, set up appointments, and then you have no success because they tell you right off the jump, oh, we don't work with the ATMs. Give them a call. Hey, my name is Juan Geronimo. I own an ATM business here in Texas. I was just calling to see if you guys work with the ATM business. If so, what are the requirements? What do I need to walk in with? Those are the type of conversations that you need to have with these banks. That way, not only both you and them are on the same page. That way, when you walk in for your appointment, you can get that set up as smooth as possible. Always recommend credit unions. Credit unions are actually the best way to go when it comes to the ATM business. They will work with you. It's just a matter of giving each credit union and call. Now here's another golden nugget for you guys. Another golden nugget. Whenever you work with banks, whenever you start calling banks for the ATM business, there will be a branch here and there. There will be a manager here and there that's going to tell you, hey, we do not work with the ATM business. One thing I recommend you guys to do is ask them, why don't you work with the ATM business? Is there a specific reason? Because sometimes these managers, these tellers, they actually don't know and they're not knowledgeable on this business. They don't know that they can't work or can't work with the ATM business because these bankers think that the ATM business is an MSB, a money service business. So one thing you guys have to do as the business owner is no, uh, how, how can I say, uh, in a sense, teach them that the ATM business is not an MSB, a money service business. A money service business is a business like PLS, um, uh, Western Unions, bus businesses that allow you to transfer funds from one account to another, the, you know, transfer uh, funds from one country to another. Those are money service businesses. The ATM business, you can't do that. The only thing you can do with our ATMs, the privately owned ATMs, are withdraw cash and check your balance. You can't deposit, you can't transfer funds, which means that the ATM business is not a money service business. There's actually a document that you can download from Google from the Secretary of Treasury. Don't mark my words, but it is a legal document that states that the ATM business is not a money service business. So, therefore, you guys have to be able to answer and have, uh, how can I say, uh, comebacks at their objections. Some of these managers, some of these tellers will tell you, hey, like point blank, we don't work with the ATM business. Oh, well, why don't you work with it? Oh, because you're considered a money service business. I, actually, I'm not. Here's the paperwork stating that I am not a money service business. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to then go talk to their managers or their boss and they're going to get a better understanding of this business. Now they're going to be like, oh, okay, I apologize. We, we can actually help you out. So those are some things that you actually have to do when it comes to figuring out which bank to work with. I have students all the time that tell me, hey, man, I went to the bank that's on your list. And they, tell, they told me they don't work with the ATM business. I was like, well, did you ask why? They were like, no. Well, you have to ask why because sometimes these people are not informed. You have to ask why. You have to figure out you know, what was their reasoning. And then sometimes you might have to give them the knowledge on the business and what, what the business is all about. 
And sometimes one thing that I do recommend everyone to do, guys, is just because one branch tells you that they don't work with you doesn't mean that the next branch won't. So if you go to um, Citibank, for example, and you go to the branch that's five minutes away from you and you try to set up a bank account or you give them a con, they tell you, no, we don't work with the ATM business. But you know Citibank is a great bank to work with, then just go to a different branch. Because at the end of the day, sometimes these people are just not trying to have they don't they don't want to have the to deal with opening up an account with you and, and getting accounts proved and uh, approved and all of that. So just go to a separate bank and deal with another manager. That, believe it or not, will help your success rate when come when it comes to opening up banks. So I hope this bank segment helped you guys out. I hope that. Kind of helped you guys understand a little bit more about the banks and the whole situation when it comes to opening up your bank account. But let's go on to processing companies, guys. When it comes to the processing company, it is very important to look for a company that will be able to give you free unlimited processing, meaning you're able to actually process 100 ATMs if you'd want. And this company is going to not only not tie you up under a contract, but also give you free processing, meaning they're not going to charge you a single penny to facilitate your transactions. Now, a lot of people always reach out to me and they're like, hey, what processing company do you recommend me? I currently help every single one of my students process all of their ATMs through my partner, my ISO. The only people that I would recommend you when it comes to ATM orders, when it comes to processing, is my people. And the reason why I say that is because the last thing I want to do is recommend you to a processor that I've heard good news about, and then they, they change up their regulations, their terms, and, and they tie you up under a contract, and now you're screwed, right? So that's the last thing that I actually want to put you through, and that's one of the reasons why I never recommend other processors or other um, ATM suppliers. So if you guys are interested in processing, if you guys are interested in ATM purchases, feel free to send me a message and I can give you guys some resources on where I can help you and how I can help you obtain these. So processing company, guys, three things to look for. Free processing, unlimited processing, meaning you can scale your business as well as no contract. One thing you want to avoid is contracts. You want to avoid contracts at all times. So look for a company that will provide all those three guys and you're off to the races. You're golden. All right, guys, and last but not least, last but not least, you want to go ahead and target location. Location is key. Location is key when it comes to this business. I know there's a lot of people that say, oh, you could just place it anywhere. You could just place it at any cash-only business. No, guys, that's not going to work. Sorry about that. Um, that's not going to work. The reason why it's not going to work is because there's some cash-only businesses that are – very slow, meaning they have like two, three people walking into their business daily. Those are the type of locations that just because they're cash only doesn't mean that they're going to be great. You want to target, and here's some things that you want to consider whenever you're finding locations. You want to target locations that are cash driven, of course, but also high traffic. You want to target these two uh, and implement these two factors into your locations. The reason why is because these are the two factors that you need to take in. Other otherwise, the location is probably not going to work out. So those are the two factors that you want to look, uh, look into when it comes to location. Now, here are a couple, sorry guys, I'm a little sweaty, but here are a couple locations that are great for the ATM business. Barber shops, nail salons, convenience stores, cash only restaurants. I have a cash only restaurant guys and it's doing amazing. Um, believe it or not, pawn shops. I, I know I know ATM business owners that have ATMs and pawn shops, and they're like, man, these ATMs are doing great. Because sometimes, guys, there are pawn shops that do like only cash transactions when it comes to pawning things or when it comes to um, how can I say it? like lo like loans on their like I guess that falls under pawn pawning their items, but they can only do cash transactions for those items. I know a couple pawn shops, and like I said, I know ATM business owners that currently work with pawn shops that have those type of, you know, terms. So, pawn shops, uh, shopping centers, malls, gentlemen's clubs, clubs in general, those are the type of locations that you want to target when it comes to the ATM business. One thing that I recommend you guys when it comes to finding locations is making sure that the location 
is um, not only compliant, meaning legal, uh, but also make sure that the location is in a great area. The last thing you want to do is put your ATM at risk if you place it at a bad area. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. There are a couple locations that are like um, that are in bad areas, but can potentially be a gold mine. And I have some of those myself. But at the end of the day, me as an ATM business owner, I'm willing to take that risk. I'm willing to take that risk. At the end of the day, with any business, there comes a risk. There's always a risk with any business, right? With my Turo business, I currently rent out a 2022 Tesla Model 3. And some of the risks that business is my rims are going to get scraped up. Here and there, I may get a couple door dings on my door. And, you know, that just comes with that business. Every business has its risk. But you as the owner have to come into this business prepared. You have to come prepared. You have to come in with the right mentality. And you have to come in with these expectations. Because at the end of the day, the last thing you want, and God forbid something bad happens and you are not prepared for it, right? So look into these locations. If you can't afford to lose an ATM or you can't afford to get your rim scraped, then consider going with a different vehicle, going with a, a different location. That plays a big part when it comes to starting your ATM business. As a beginner, all I targeted was great locations and great areas because I wasn't ready for those high-risk locations. Now that I'm in this business for three years, now that I currently have over 20 ATMs on location, I'm willing to place a couple ATMs here and there at bad locations. Of course, my security measures are going to be a little bit more advanced, like having GPS tracking, having tilt sensors and all that good stuff in my ATMs. But that comes, a li that comes with a little bit of a higher price. But at the end of the day, I'm willing to take that risk. So location is key, guys. Every, every location varies depending on your portfolio, depending on your needs, depending on your area. But take into consideration cash-driven and high-traffic locations. If you guys enjoyed this mini course, go ahead and comment right now. Go ahead and comment um, ATM right now in the comments. Comment ATM in the comments. If you guys enjoyed this mini course, comment ATM. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys 30 seconds real quick to comment ATMs and start getting your questions together, guys. If you guys have been, you know, writing all of this information down, if any of you guys have been, you know, thinking of some questions throughout this live, get ready to start commenting your questions. We are about to move into a segment of a Q&A. So give me 30 seconds, guys, and we'll go ahead and get you guys set up with some questions and a Q&A. All right, guys. All right. Q&A time. Q&A time. All right, guys. Real quick, before we actually go into a Q&A, let me go ahead and give you guys the startup costs on the ATM business. I know some of you guys have this question. How much does it cost to start the ATM business? Well, the startup cost for the ATM business is in the ballpark of six dollars to $8,000 to get started with your first ATM. Now, here's the reason why I say it costs you six to $8,000. First and foremost, the ATM in itself is going to cost you anywhere near $2,550 to $2,700 plus, depending on who you go with, the different processing or shipping costs that you end up covering. So you're looking at $2,550 to $2,700 after tax, after shipping and all that good stuff. Number two, the internet. When it comes to your internet, guys, you could always get in, uh, internet from the business. But one thing I always recommend is if you can get your own internet, highly recommend you doing that. Because if the business's Wi-Fi starts to slow down, guess what? Your ATM is also going to slow down. The last thing you want to do is have a customer trying to use your ATM, and the Wi-Fi goes down, and mid-transaction, the customer can't use it. Not only is it a loss of money for you, but you could potentially run into a dispute where your ATM charged the customer's account, bank account, but it didn't dispense the cash because it had a t uh, TCP connection timeout. 
uh, which is an internet issue. So always recommend providing your own internet. I used to use the business's internet myself, but of course I was going through those issues that I just explained where their Wi-Fi would slow down or their Wi-Fi would go out. And at the end of the day, that reflected on the performance of my ATM. So I decided to make the investment of $180 for an internet box that I can provide for you guys as well. And a $6.99 monthly fee. Now, the reason why the monthly fee is so cheap on the ATM internet boxes is because these internet boxes actually run from cellular antennas, just like your cell phone. So they don't run off satellites and all that good stuff. So that's the reason why they're not expensive. Highly recommended. 100% recommend getting your own internet. Now, number two, eight, I mean, number three, processing. Now, when it comes to processing, it, it could go two ways. You could get free processing or you can pay for processing. At the end of the day, it depends on which company you go with. But like I told you guys during the course, go with free processing. Location agreements, guys. A location agreement can cost you up to $1,200 if not more just for a simple location agreement. Location agreements typically you want to get from an attorney. You want to get a, a, an enforceable agreement. You don't want to just write one up yourself and then happen to jump into a lawsuit later on down the journey and later on down your journey and you don't have an enforceable agreement. So one thing I recommend is investing into a location agreement. For those of you guys watching right now and even those of you guys watching the replay, if you guys stick along toward the end of this live, I will let you guys know how I can provide you my personal agreement for your ATM business. But you do need a location agreement and typically that could cost you anywhere near $1,200, $500, depending on which attorney you go with. But on average, you're looking at about 1000 bucks. After that, guys, you're looking at one to $3,000 in bulk cash. Vote cash is pretty much the money that you're going to use to fill up your ATM. Vote cash, it is very important to have enough vote cash. And also, depending on the capital that you have, target specific businesses. For example, my cash only cash only location that I was telling you guys about earlier that, that is doing like a thousand transactions a month. That location, I knew it was a busy location, high traffic location. I knew I was going to need more than one to $3,000. So I prepared myself for it. As a beginner, I would recommend you guys to target locations that are in, that are smaller demand for cash when it comes to withdrawing cash. So like, for example, barbershops at a barbershop, you're paying $40 max for a haircut. So what does that mean? If people need cash, they're going to only withdraw up to like 40, 60 bucks from your ATM. They're not going to be, you know, pulling out the max limit from your machine every time like you like they would at a tattoo shop, for example. One of my students has a tattoo shop and they're withdrawing, you know, 200, 150 high amounts on, on a regular. And that's because it's a tattoo shop. So th there you go. You know, tattoos are a lot more expensive than haircuts. So you want to be able to target locations that you are able to handle. So bulk cash, typically, you know, it ranges from one to $3,000. Last but not least, guys, you have others, like other, other accessories, other expenses, your LLC, the brochures, business cards, any little thing that you invest into your business, those are going to be the extra costs for your business, which would put you in the range of six to $8,000. That is how much it would cost you to invest into your first ATM. Once you invest into the second machine, the price is going to drop. The reason why the price is going to drop is because one, you don't need the brochures anymore. You don't need the business cards anymore. You don't need the LLC anymore. You already got that. So that's going to eliminate the other accessories, other expenses. Also, you're not going to need a location agreement. You're not going to have to pay over and over for a location agreement. Once you pay the first time fee for the location agreement, you can use that location agreement for the rest of your portfolio. So that's going to draw. That's going to also drop the price down. So there's things here and there that you're not going to have to worry about paying once you have that second, third machine. So from six to eight thousand dollars, whenever you're ready for the second ATM, you're just looking to cover the ATM and the bulk cash, right? So. That is what is going to cost you to get started with your ATM business if you get started on your own. Now, real quick, go, guys, let's go ahead and jump into my elite package, which is the ATM Elite Mentorship Package. This package right here, guys, is the package that 
all of my students that I currently have till today, which is about 35 students, all go with this package. And the reason why they go with this package is because right now, this is the best of the best when it comes to the ATM business, when it comes to starting your business alongside a mentor like myself. For example, with my elite mentorship package, you get an online step-by-step -step course. Aside from the online step-by-step -step course, you're also going to get access to a private only client, a private clients only Facebook group. In this group, I will pretty much keep in touch with you. I will teach you guys different tips. You guys will be able to network with one another. And to go back to the online step-by-step -step course, guys, it is a step-by-step -step course that's going to guide you from A to Z. So I actually apply for an LLC on video. I apply for the EIN on video. I talk to the businesses and lock these locations down on video. I prospect locations. I do everything on video in this online step-by-step -step course that you guys will have lifetime access to. Lifetime access. Lifetime access to the online course. Lifetime access to the clients-only Facebook group. With my Elite Package, you also will get one brand new ATM. It is a Hios and Halo 2, and you do get two-year warranty from the manufacturer. So the Hios and Halo 2, first and foremost, guys, this machine's a workhorse right here. This machine is going to last you forever as long as you're maintaining it. It's kind of like a vehicle, like a car. If you get a vehicle, uh, a little Honda, for example, and you're doing the regular maintenance, you're doing your tire rotations, you're doing your oil changes, you're doing everything that you need to, it is going to last you a long time. Same thing with the ATMs. If you're doing your regular maintenance on it, it is going to last you. Therefore, this ATM, guys, I've been in the business for three years. My oldest machine has been on location for three years. Until this day, it has not messed up on me. I have had no problems with the Hios and Halo 2. And all of my portfolio is currently Hios and Halo 2s. So you will get one brand new Hios and Halo 2 included. You also will get one brand new internet box included. The only thing you will have to cover for the internet box is a $6.99 monthly fee. And that's, again, guys, to give it service just like you pay for your cell phone, in a sense, right? Once you get these two items, you also will get free unlimited processing, which, I was, which is what I was talking about earlier today, guys. You want to target free unlimited processing when it comes to the ATM business. And with my Elite Mentorship Package, you will get exactly that. Also... Like I said, guys, I will provide you a location placement agreement. It's the contract between you and the business owner. I paid $1,200 for my contract agreement, and I am going to give that to you so you can use that to your advantage within your business. All you have to do is just change your name, change your logo, and you're good to go. Now you don't have to worry about trying to find an attorney, trying to find the right attorney, trying to find the right price and ultimately pay money for an agreement. And then later on down the line, not, it, it not working out, right? One thing that I learned throughout my experience was whenever you use a two to three page agreement, a lot of these business owners, they get intimidated by that and they don't like it. I started this business with a two to three page agreement and the business owners, they would get intimidated. They're like, Hey, you know what? Leave your agreement. Let me read over. I'll call you back. Guess what? They wouldn't call me back. So agreements, they play a big part. Once I invested into a one-page agreement, which is the agreement that I am going to provide you, one page, you will notice a dramatic difference. And, and if you start with my agreement, then you will notice the difference because you're starting with the best of the best. But if you are currently using a two- to three-page agreement and you transition to a one-page agreement like the one that I currently have, you're going to notice the difference. Whenever I whenever I was in the business, guys, I noticed a 30 to 40% closing rate when it came to the agreement alone. Just because business owners were able to look at that agreement right then and there whenever I was having the meeting with them, read through it. If not, I can walk them through it and they don't have to be like, oh, there's multiple pages. I have to get my guy to read it, my attorney to read it. No, you read it right then and there. They read all the terms. Boom, they get that signed and you got your location agreement signed right then and there. You don't have to walk out and go do a follow-up, any of that. So I will provide you with a one-page location agreement. Besides that, guys, you will also receive multiple PDFs. I will provide you my brochure. I will provide you a list of ATM business-friendly banks nationwide, all over the United States, banks that will work with the ATM business. I will provide you sell scripts and more, guys. I'm going to provide you qualification questionnaires. I'm going to provide you the MSB documentation that I was talking about earlier in the live. I'm going to provide you over a dozen documents 
that you're going to be able to use to leverage when it comes to your ATM business. Besides that, you also will get unlimited one-on-one -on -one mentorship. That is one thing that separates my mentorship program from any other program out there. There's other programs out there that if you want mentorship, they're going to charge you monthly fees. They're going to charge you, oh, you're going to have to pay $500 a month for a mentorship. Oh, you're going to have to pay a, a $5,000 upfront cost for my mentorship for a one-hour call, a two-hour call, a three-hour call. With, with my mentorship program, guys, you get one-on-one -on -one unlimited mentorship. And if you guys have any questions about that, go over to my guide section after this live. All of my student success stories that I have in the guide section, I tag every single one of my students that have successfully placed an ATM on location. Go ahead and send all of them a friend request. Go ahead and send them a message and ask them for yourself. Hey, how is it working with Juan? Is it true he gives you unlimited one-on-one -on -one mentorship? Guys, every single one of my students gets my personal cell phone number so that if you ever have any questions, you're able to reach out to me anytime and I'm going to be there to help you out. Not only that, you do get tech support as well. You get Hyosung tech support. You get Switch Commerce tech support. You get in-hand tech support, depending on the companies you work with. Those are the companies I work with. Those are my, uh, those are my partners, right? <clears throat> but you will get one-on-one -on -one unlimited mentorship. And this is lifetime, guys. There's no, oh, it expires after five years, after three years. You get lifetime access to this. You get lifetime access to the online uh, course, the clients-only Facebook group, the agreement, the processing, as well as my mentorship. And last but not least, guys, I am going to give you guys ATM programming training. There's no program out there doing that right now. There's no program teaching you how to program your own ATM. If anything, they're taking advantage of you by upselling you this service, telling you, hey, we charge you 350 bucks to have someone program the machine for you or have your ATM pre-programmed before it ships out to you. Here's the flaw into that, guys. Number one, you're never going to learn the software within your ATM, meaning you're never going to learn how to actually run your own ATM business. Number two, these guys are going to program the ATM and they're going to hold these passwords from you. They're going to give you access to only one password, which is to go ahead and fill it up, do all the regular maintenance on it, but not to actually switch processing companies. Meaning if you want to switch a processing company, you have to get into more debt when it comes to the software and these, these passwords you have to be able to have. And a lot of these companies that offer you this third party service to program your ATM, they're not going to give you those passwords. You're going to have to email them to get a hold of those passwords. And then they're going to try to throw something at you and be like, Hey, well, we can't, we can't uh, provide you any of that. Am I still live guys? Am I still live? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys see me? Because my, my screen just started acting up. Okay, I think I'm I think I'm live again. I think I'm back. It just kind of tripped. My screen over here to my left kind of went blank and I'm like, oh no. But yeah, guys, programming training. You will get ATM programming training. Jonathan, let them know in the chat, brother. Let them know in the chat. Um, but yeah, guys, sorry, I got a little sidetracked. I got a little, I got a little pumped right there. But you will get ATM programming training, and I will actually hop on a one-hour call with you and walk you through the full programming setup when it comes to your ATM business. That way, ultimately, you learn how to program your own ATM as well as learn the software. So whenever you're ready to scale, you can literally do it all on your own. I am ultimately teaching you how to successfully start your ATM business and run it 100% on your own. Later on down the line, if you want to hire a third-party bolter, if you want to hire a third-party service to do the work for you, you can definitely do that. But one thing I always recommend in any type of business is learn how to do it yourself and then hire people. Because at the end of the day, if you hire people but you don't know how to do it, you're never going to know whether they're doing the job right or they're doing it efficiently. You're never going to know. So you always want to learn first and then you want to hire people. That way they can do the job the way you want it to be done, right? So you will get ATM programming training. This is my elite package, guys. This is the package that is the most common package that all of my students enroll with. And that's just because it's a no-brainer, guys. You're get, It's a one-stop shop. You're getting everything. So if you guys are excited for the ATM elite package, go ahead and comment plug if you guys are interested. That's P-L-U-G. Go ahead and comment plug. P-L-U-G, if you guys are interested in my package. It is called the ATM Plug Elite Package. 
If you guys are interested, comment plug. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys 30 seconds real quick to go ahead and comment plug. And if you guys are uh, interested in this, comment plug and comment your questions after this because we are moving on to our Q&A. Go ahead and comment plug for those of you guys that are interested. And I'll see you guys in 30 seconds for the Q&A. All right, guys, Q&A time, Q&A time. Who's excited for Q&A? If you guys are excited for the Q&A, go ahead and comment Q&A. Q&A if you guys are excited for the Q&A tonight. Pretty much, guys, the Q&A consists of you guys asking questions and me answering them for you. So if you guys have any questions regarding the ATM business, feel free to comment them down below. And... I will go ahead and give you guys all of the answers that you guys need. It's definitely worth it. Let me go ahead and put that comment up here. It's definitely worth it. You're paying for Juan's mentorship and knowledge that you get to keep with you for the rest of your life. Exactly, brother. That is the way of thinking. That's what I'm talking about when it comes to mentality, guys. Mentality plays a big part when it comes to not only life, but your business. If you think about it, in a negative way, of course, it's not going to work for you you're, because you're only thinking you're only thinking negatively about it. But if you think the positive way, meaning, hey, I'm investing into his mentorship, I'm going to gain all of the information that he learned throughout his career, throughout his journey, throughout his life, and I'm going to be able to get a shortcut and learn everything right then and there just by investing into him. That's literally what mentorships consist of, guys. My last program that I invested into for my personal knowledge was $4,000 guys. I invested $4,000 into a mentorship program and it was just like a series of videos. And I invested into this because I knew the value that I was going to get from it. I knew the value that I was going to implement into my life, into my business. So I decided again to invest in myself and guess what guys, once you start to implement all of that knowledge, all of that information that you gather from these books, from these mentors, from these programs, from these courses, you can then implement them into your life and tenfold that, guys, 10x that, 5x that, you know, you could always, you know, triple, double, whatever you, whatever you choose to do, guys, you could, you, you could literally do that with this information. Let me see. Let me see. I got another question I, I got over here. Information about referral fees. <sighs> So referral fees, guys, um, and, and this is for, for my my, uh, my brother Ch Terrence, Terrence. So when it comes to referral fees, here's a couple of things that I always take into consideration. Like I told you guys in the beginning, I struggled to land one of my locations. I couldn't get a hold of the business owner, so I had no other option but to offer a referral fee. When it comes to referral fees, guys, you also don't want to shoot yourself in the leg and pay out a big referral fee, install an ATM, and then it not working out, right? So you always want to do referral fees whenever you know it's worth it. Whenever you see that the business, it's a high traffic location, it's a cash driven location. Whenever it comes to referral fees, guys, I always stick to $150 to $200, $300 for referrals. Now, I will not pay a referral fee unless I get the uh, I get the business under contract, unless I install my ATM inside of the business. That's when I would pay the referral fee out. There's a lot of guys out there. There's a lot of people on the internet right now saying, hey, I got this type of location, but it's a 200 300 $400 referral fee. But they expect you to pay them before they send you the information. That is a no-no, guys. People can get scammed like that. Always, always, always get the information first. Lock the business under contract. Once you've successfully locked the business under contract and installed your ATM, then pay out the referral fee. And like I said, you want to stick within 150 to 250 bucks, maybe 300. 
There are location finder services out there online, like on Facebook, that will find locations for you or just find random locations. And if they happen to be in your area, you can pay them a fee for it. And it's a referral fee. But those guys, since they're putting in work, they do charge you up to the $600, $700 per location. So at the end of the day, I always like to start off finding locations on my own. Not only because I get to familiarize myself with the sales part of this business, not only because I get to familiar, my, familiarize myself with talking to these business owners and networking and building relationships, but you know, once I once I learn the process, if I ever decide to hire a call center, if I ever decide to hire someone to find locations for me, I can teach them my ways. I can teach them the type of locations to target. But yeah, guys, that's. That's a little bit on referral fees. Any other questions, guys? Any other questions? Q&A time. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment them down below. If I don't see any more questions, probably within the next minute or so, then that will be in for that will be it for tonight's live. I do appreciate everyone that's tuned in so far. I do appreciate everyone that's been interacting with me in the comments. And again, for anyone watching the replay, comment down below. Even if you're watching the replay, I'm keeping up with the comments even after this live post into the group. So... Comment if you guys are watching replay. Matter of fact, if you guys are watching the replay, go ahead and comment replay right now. That's all. Go ahead and comment replay. <clears throat> if you guys are watching the live, go ahead and comment live. Go ahead and comment live if you guys are watching the replay while we get some questions. While we get some questions up on here. Any more questions, guys? Any more questions? Q and A time. Q and A time. Already. Did you guys catch that? I was about to drink my water with the lid open. Don't start making fun of me in the comments, guys. No more questions. No more questions. I don't see no more questions, guys. I'm going to give you guys 30 seconds to comment your questions. If I don't see no more questions within that 30-second timer, I'm going to go ahead and end it, to, uh, end it for you guys. Once again, guys, it was a pleasure hopping on here and giving you guys all of the information that I possibly can when it comes to helping you start your ATM business. At the end of the day, guys, my goal is to help you start your ATM business and start generating passive income with ATMs. So if you guys enjoyed the live, guys, and you guys um, – interacted with me i greatly appreciate it i go on live every single week every single tuesday to be in, in, in uh specific every tuesday at 6 p.m central standard time so for those of you guys that enjoyed the live i hope to see you guys in the next live i'm gonna go ahead and give you guys 30 seconds if i don't see any comments within those 30 seconds we're gonna go ahead and end it i greatly appreciate everyone again it was juan geronimo and i'll see you guys next time if you guys don't comment